the the Edo Corporation was founded in September of 1925 by Earl D. Osborne. And the reason for the name of Edo was he went to his mother originally to borrow the money, and she was a Phelps Dodge um, uh, wealthy individual. And she um, decided she did not want her um, name connected with the aviation, which in that days was pretty, which is a pretty sporting industry. So what she did is she mutually, she finally agreed to supply him with the money if he used only the company's initials. So that's the reason for EDO, which became a well-known company. The pictures you're looking at are about the mid-30s, 1937, and these are early photographs of the Edo manufacturing operation located on Flushing Bay across from LaGuardia Airport. Um, it, there, if you'll note, there's a large seaplane ramp, and in fact, Edo used the seaplane ramp to, mo- to launch most of its aircraft, including the famous Lindbergh flight that went to China. This photograph is of a Buell Air sedan, model CA-6, and it is, modif- and is, lo- is installed on Edo J-5300 floats. Note that it is a bi-wing aircraft, and is believed that this photograph is in the late 20s or early 30s. The Waco CPF was built for the um, Brazilian Navy, and it's got a right 250-horsepower engine, and it's an Edo model 45-2800 float. This photograph is of a Curtis Wright Gypsy Moth, and we're not quite sure where the name came from, but we believe that Curtis might have built some of these under a license from de Havilland. The airplane is shown on an Edo model 1525, and the individual standing on the float is George Post, who was the first sales manager for the Edo Corporation. There is not much information available on this aircraft, and it is believed to be a Volte V-1A with a cyclone engine. It must be quite a large airplane, it's installed on an Edo 65-9225 float, which means it had probably was an airplane in excess of 10,000 pounds gross weight. This is a very interesting set of pictures, and it shows a famous white Russian called Alexander D. Seversky. And the first photograph is sitting in the cockpit of the Golden Server Sky. Uh, D. D. Seversky was a white Russian who actually had a wooden leg and when the aircraft was being built at the Edo factory, he would actually stop at different workstations in the plant and borrow an oil gun, an oil squirt gun, to lubricate his leg, and then he would roll down his pants and go back to work. Which, um, the installation had an adjustable float to change the angle of incidence between the float and the airframe. Uh, this made for a very fast, fast aircraft. D. Seversky aircraft would, would be become the prototype of the first Diversky Aircraft Corporation. The aircraft was the P-35, which was the forerunner of the famous aircraft P-47, which was built Republic Aircraft. One of the interesting things about this photograph, this set of photographs, if you look carefully, there's actually five wheels in the photograph. And what would happen was, when he put it in a landing configuration, the rear... Um, the rear of the float had a little wheel, and there was also a tail wheel on the airplane. So when he actually landed, there were five wheels on the airplane. The other interesting part of the story is he talked um, Corbin to building the airplane. And you can see in these photographs some of the big jigs and stuff that we built. And um, he didn't have too much money, so we would work on the airplane for a while. And then when we ran, when we used up all his money, Corbin would have the airplane lifted to the ceiling of the factory. And when D. Seversky came back, came around to uh, see how the airplane was coming, he would sit him down in his office, and he would hand the check to a runner who would run the check into town to see if the check was any good. And then he would call back to the corporation, and somebody in the corporation would tell the factory workers to lower it down on the floor, and everybody would go to work on it to make them think that the airplane uh, had been worked on the full time. We're not exactly sure of the number, but we believe nine or ten of these were built and a few were sold to the Colombian Air Force, and it is rumored that one or two of these were in the Franco uh, War in 1938 or 39. At the beginning of the Second World War, uh, the Japanese had a large, num- large number of seaplanes. 
that were quite useful when they were invading the different islands. And the U.S. government, the Navy, in fact, came to Edo and asked us to install the Grumman Wildcat. And this is a photograph of the Grumman Wildcat FA-4-350 with a Pratt & Whitney 1,200-horsepower engine and Edo Model 62, 65, 60 floats. And um, the airplane was put together and flown because of the horsepower and the small tail area. It was not a successful airplane. It had major stability. So only one of these was ever built, and it did not meet the requirements of um, the Navy, and so the aircraft never went into production as a seaplane. Okay, this is a Northrop N-3T that had a right 1100 engine and was stalled on Edo 67 9000 floats. Uh, in the late 30s, the Northrop received a contract from the government of Finland to develop this aircraft for patrol of the extensive coastal areas. Only a small quantity were ever built, and, and by the time the aircraft was ready for delivery, the government of Finland had been overrun by the Germans, and therefore the airplane was never delivered to the Germans. A small flight of these, four or five of these, were ferried to England, and on the way, uh, they used um, Iceland as a fueling spot, and one somehow had a mishap in the, in the river. I don't believe it was a landing or takeoff accident, but they had a big current, and it was sunk in the, um, it was sunk in the river, and, and in, the in the late 1980s, a crew went back in and salvaged it, and the aircraft was rebuilt in the 1990s in the perfect condition and was returned by the Northrop Company to Finland. And it is in a museum to this day, and it certainly would be worth going to see if anybody ever has the opportunity. And this was a Beach Air 18 that was developed for the, um, I believe, the U.S. Navy in the in the late 40s. And this, um, this Beach 18 had a Jacobs 285 and was related later replaced with a Wright 320 engine. It was originally installed on the Edo model 55 7170s and later installed on a larger float of 56 uh, 7650. The original installation was done um, for the Air Force, and later the FAA was a, approval was obtained. And at one time, almost 100 Beach 18s on floats were operating in North America, and a few were still operating uh, along the uh, border up around International Falls. One of the interesting parts of this, one of the interesting part of this photograph is in the background is a ferry of the old, a picture of the old ferry slip that used to go between uh, the Bronx and College Point before the Whitestone Bridge was uh, completed. This is an interesting um, picture of some of the work that Edo did during the Second World War on developing rescue equipment. Um, we made a life raft, a lifeboat that was dropped from the B-29, and this, this picture is actually a rescue cell that was used on the Curtis Seahawk SC-1. Uh, most of the airplanes were built in Columbus, Ohio, and I was able to talk to a Mr. Dan Paterini, who was at Edo, who was at Edo at that time and worked on this project. Um, originally, the floats on the Seahawk uh, had, had two bomb bays in them, and they used to carry bombs. And that didn't prove very successful, and they later went and put fuel tanks in this. And this cell, actually, this, fuel, this cell, rescue cell, actually clipped onto the armament racks under the wing, and we believe it had a little drop-down ladder. So if it would see a pilot down the water, they would land, and the pilot would climb into the cell, close the door, and they would fly him home. This was done in probably uh, 1944 and 1945. The first major contract... Of, of any significance, Edo received in the late 30s um, for the for the uh, Navy um, boat Kingfisher. And the picture, the first picture we're seeing is of the main float, which is 68-9860. And it also had two small wingtip floats that were rather small, and their number is 68750. Before the project was done, we built over 1,500 of these floats and they were used extensively uh, by the U.S. Navy. One of the more famous people we, uh, we rescued was Eddie Rickenbacker, and Edo got an E award during the Second World War when the airplane spotted Rickenbacker and I believe four people in the water, 
and they were in such bad shape they could barely pick them out of the water. And they had uh, this was a two-place airplane, and they had four people they picked out of the water, so they now had six total. And they um, they put the people, they tied the people, they put Rickenbacker in the fuselage, in the, in the co-pilot seat, and tied everybody else on the wing. And they and they taxied for over 24 hours in very rough seas to get these people to a rust rescue ship. Okay, these are interesting shots in a number of ways. Number one, it shows you the type of jigs that Eagle manufactured to build these floats. And the picture, the picture the in this case, is the 249-2870 that later became the 628-2960. It was used primarily on the Cessna 180 and 185. Edo is famous for developing a method of softening the, the skins, the forward stretch skins, the compound skins. And here is an example. Uh, the skins were put into a, into a heat treat oven, and then they were stored in, in dry ice. And then they were put on a stretch block that was about... 20 feet long, and their machine that was 20 feet long, and they'd pull these and beat these, and that would develop that compound curve. As you can see here, they're putting the rivets in the bottom skin, and then uh, once the airplane comes out of that jig, then the top assembly goes on. This is a photograph of the original C-47 um, that was put on Edo Model 78-29,000 floats. This is an amphibious float, and it's the largest float ever built by Edo. The float is 42 feet long, 5 feet wide, and 5 feet high, and had in for internal fuel cells that could hold 325 gallons of fuel in each float. The aircraft had hydraulic water rudder steering. The prototype was put together at the American Airlines facility at LaGuardia Airport, and all other float installations were done at the Douglas factory in Oklahoma City. The original contract was for 150 sets, but only 36 were manufactured before World War II ended, and the contract was canceled. It is believed that, is believed that 12 to 13 sets were installed on the C-47, and they saw service in Alaska, the Philippines, uh, New Guinea, and they were used primarily for medical evacu evacuation in the Pacific Theater. There is only one set of these floats of left in the world and is installed on a DC-3 in Greenville, Maine, and is currently owned by Folsom Aviation. This is a picture of the, um, of the Cessna L-19 on the Edo 339-2250 float. This was, uh, this was a built in the mid-50s, and it was done for the U.S. Army, and a requirement was originally for an observation aircraft that could operate off water. The original float installation was on straight floats, 44-2425, and later on the 248-2440. The L-19 amphibious model, I believe, was done for the U.S. Air Force, and there were at least 25 sets of the amphibious version built. This photograph details an effort of Edo in the late 40s to develop a lower price float that would have less labor in it. The actual float that's detailed in the picture is a 92-1400. And if you'll note, it's a three-seam float. All the old floats you've looked at in the past were five seams. And this one has um, three seams basically consisting of the keel and the, and the chines, and then the top skin is a wraparound across the top. After this float was completed, we went on to the Edo 89-2000 float, of which over 2,500 uh, sets were made, and is really the standard for most of the early uh, Piper aircraft. This is a photograph of the Edo Model 597-2790, which was developed from the Edo 289-2700. The 2700 was the first amphibious float that we had on the Cessna 180, and as the Cessna 180 grew into a 185, they needed a larger displacement float to meet the higher gross weight. Um, this photograph is in the, in the late 50s, and it is at Edo College Point with the, um, with the ramp in the background. Some of those employees that are in that photograph I personally know, and they had been with Edo for over 40 years. The Edo Corporation went on to become primarily a military contractor and is well known for its, um, its sonar, 
its sleds and its bomb racks that it went on to produce. The corporation um, sold the float operations to Kenmore Air Harbor in Seattle, who has kept on kept manufacturing uh, the floats today. And Edo is now currently owned by IT&T.